the sincere confessor. When we fail, the pain and the guilt creates so much pressure often that we need an emotional release valve. And many of us, many of us know exactly what that is. That emotional release valve is the crying that we experience. And how, and how there are just times in your life that you need to cry. Friends, this was a time in David's life that he needed to cry. If your Bible is like mine, it actually has underneath that psalm a little explanation. When the prophet of Nathan came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. Isn't that a great subtitle for your song? That's in the Bible forever. It's there so we can see, huh, David messed up. And this is his response. This is what happens. I believe David's pages were tear-stained as he wrote these words. <coughs> I believe the ink probably smeared and the paper probably crinkled as he was writing these words of sincere confession. And the confession pours out. When you cry out to God, this is where we must start. I'd like for you to note how many times the word I, me, and my is used just in those six verses. Have mercy on me. My transgressions, my iniquity, my sin, my transgressions, I sin. Friends, who's got the problem here? Whose fault is this sin? Where's the denial? Where's the blame? Now I'd also like you to look down at your text and see how many times you see the word but in the text. If I may, if I may say so, this is a butt-kicking text. There's no buts in there. They've all been kicked out. Because in the midst of confession, you can't say, blot out my transgressions, but I didn't really mean to do it. Look at my sin, but look over at Bathsheba's sin. There's no what's about it. Confession is a process where we simply realize <coughs> In the grand tradition of that old spiritual David saying, it's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Application. There is a stark difference between crying out to God and complaining out to God to God. This is the first step as we cry out. And that step is confession. <laughs> Friends, are you at the point where pain and guilt are so profound that your sin has turned into a giant and has become unmanageable? It may be time to stop complaining to God and start confessing to God as we cry out. Now after we begin to confess, the next beautiful part of our crying starts to unfold. The most beautiful part of our crying begins to appear and we find it in verses 7 through 12. Cleanse me with the hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear the joy of hope and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. And blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me 
the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. So like number two, the deep cleansing. The deep cleansing. Now here again, I have my wonderful little Bible dictionary and I looked up Hesa. And you'll see on the front of your bulletin a wonderful image of the Hesop plant. And the Hesop plant was actually referred to in Leviticus 14 for a cleansing experience that people could have when they got lepers. David brings this image of the Hesop into his, into his crying because he believes there's a correlation between the sin that he has and leprosy. Now, friends, if I can just get a little gross with you, in case we've forgotten what leprosy is, it's an infectious skin disease that you get and hunks of your skin start to rot and fall off. Kind of nasty, wouldn't you say? Perhaps David is, is actually getting in touch. Maybe David is, is understanding how much his sin has hurt himself and has hurt others. Can I get a little bit nastier? Is that okay if rotting flesh isn't quite nasty enough? Um, whiter than snow. Whiter than snow. I'm going to get really nasty. I'm going to start talking about diapers. <laughs> Some of you know that Rebecca and I lean towards a little more, let's recycle, let's be environmentally conscious. One of the things, back in the day when I was on a sabbatical and went to the seminary, I drove past the landfill, and as I drove past the landfill, I saw those disposable diapers being pushed, and they never buy the grade, and they're out there, and they're nasty. And so we said, well, we're going to have kids, we're going to go old school. We're going to do cloth diapers. And so we did. And then I realized that I was going to be the one washing them. <laughs> and, and now I know there are people here who, who do know what cloth diapers are all about, but for those who don't, they're nasty. And they get filled with stuff that you don't want to see and you don't want to handle. And then you take them and you put them in a little bucket of, of borax and water and they just kind of, they live there for a while and, and, they, and they ruminate. And then, and then you take them and you, and you put them in the washer. After, I mean, after you've cleaned out most of the stuff, okay, then you put them in there, and then you put them in the washer, and you pour in this bleach and vinegar mixture, and they get washed. And you know, I, I never, and maybe it's just because I'm so easily entertained, <laughs> I would marvel. I would marvel as I would pull it off these cloth diapers. They were, they were white. I'm serious. I pulled them out and they were whiter than snow. I knew what had been in those things. But somehow, they were made clean again. Whiter than snow. I remember in some time hanging out on the line, thinking, wow, that's an amazing process. That's a deep cleansing process that I can't even quite understand. What's the point of all this? 